Amy Burr, the uh, president of JetBlue Technology Ventures. So, thank you so much uh, for joining us on this episode of Focus Wire Pulse. It's October. We're focusing this time on all things startups, investment, and things like that. So once again, thank you, Amy, for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Right. Okay. So we'll start off broadly. And then we'll mm -hmm. kind of dive into some of the specific issues. But what would you say, Amy, is your kind of perspective now on the kind of the startup market during the pandemic, some of the behavior that you've seen mm -hmm. and beyond and how startups that you have under your kind of tutelage and those that you observe in the wider market, some of the kind of observations that you've seen? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of interesting things happen, have happened during the pandemic. And now that we're, I don't know, I don't even know if you can say we're out of it, but on this side of it, uh, this this where we, you know, this kind of tale of the pandemic, you know, a lot of startups struggled, um, obviously, you know, especially travel specific startups, right? Um, you know, anything that ha was heavily impacted by COVID, you know, really struggling with demand and revenue and customers and all of these types of things, some totally fine with no issues. In fact, there were a lot of really great opportunities for startups during the pandemic. So it was interesting to kind of watch how that would play out. And you know, we spent a lot of time with our startups um, and we would, you know, each of our startups in our portfolio company, you know, in our portfolio needed different things from us. Some really needed advice on how to just maintain cash and make it through. Others were like, hey, we're doing really well and, and there's no issues here at all. And how can we take advantage of this opportunity to put out products that might be really compelling right now? And so it was really interesting to watch, you know, from a startup world perspective, just how, you know, how different types of startups were impacted and how they were handling the situation. You know, lots of opportunity for investors during that time, you know, lots of, of great startups that were still fundraising, but then others that really, really struggled. And we've had a few that, you know, are trying really hard to make it through and it's really hard, you know? So I think in general, broadly, it was, you know, just dependent on the type of company you had. It also was very dependent on whether you had just fundraised. So if you had, had completed a fundraising um, situation before COVID started, much better off. If you were in the one of those one of those startups that was looking to fundraise like first quarter, second quarter, third quarter of 2020, real trouble. Real, yeah. Really difficult for you. Other than that pattern that you've just identified, Amy, which is those that have just raised and those that were hoping mm -hmm. to raise at some point, are there any other patterns around some of those kind of behaviors that you just talked about? I mean, is it sector specific? Is it age yeah. of the startup or is it something else? Or is it, you know, maybe you won't say, but is it those that are better run than others possibly? Uh, you know, I, I think really with sector specific. So the companies in our portfolio that really, are, you know, like I said, have struggled have been travel specific. So companies that require for their livelihood, people to actually be traveling, you know, actually being out, around the world, especially internationally focused, those are the companies that probably have struggled the most. Um, but again, if some one of those companies had just fundraised, then it, it, you know, they're in better shape. So it's a little bit of that, a little bit of sector specific. There were a lot of you know, companies that came out during the pandemic that were very specific to tackling COVID. So a lot of health and safety, like, you know, think about, you know, new methods of testing and um, cleaning and thermal tech and all this kind of thing. Um, and they, they had some really interesting traction for a couple months, but those are types of sectors that don't live for the long term, right? This is a very specific type of company. So I took a ton of startup pitches from companies like that, that I'm like, you know, you, you're doing a really great job of, of handling this specific, particular item, but what is your plan post pandemic? Because this is so specific. So there's a lot of that type of thing out there too. What kind of reaction? I know it would be wonderful if you gave us names, but I'd appreciate that you wouldn't. But what kind of reaction were you getting when you were saying, look, what's your plan B once everything's OK? with? Did they have a plan B or were they saying, oh, OK, well, we'll just see where we go? You know, not a lot of plan B. Um, more, you know, this, but this is really needed right now. And, you know, what? I get that. But, you know, as an investor, you know, as, as a business partner, Yes, those are really needed right now. And, and yes, there's going to be business partnerships that you're going to gain from that. As an investor, that's maybe not the best investment for me. And I'm going to use my money elsewhere. Yeah. So have you seen anything specifically around some of the tactics that are now being deployed by uh, founders and executives teams during this recovery phase? Yeah, you know, uh, a couple of different things. Number one, um, there were a lot of interesting 
companies that added on products, you know, pivoted, if you want to use that word, you know, did a little bit of a pivot and, and maybe added on a product that will actually live and be really exciting. You know, at one point, um, you know, things like a lot of data driven products, you know, information for travelers, especially like in, in the travel, you know, the, the travel types of companies that did better are the ones that put out products that were like, here's a product that is about information for you. Cause that's one of the hardest things about the pandemic is people just didn't know what to do, right. Where to go, what to do, all of those things. So there was, you know, lots of pivoting, lots of product um, launches that actually will live and are really great. And the other thing that we really uh, talked to a lot of our startups about was, you know, listen, you may not be the busiest right now from your product. So why don't you take this time to like tighten up your tech stack, your business processes, make sure you've hired the right people. Like if you have the money, but you don't necessarily have the work, use that time and those resources to do things will make you better as you come out. So some of our companies, you know, our startups actually, you know, did a lot of work on, on their on their actual tech platform, which just means that they have the opportunity to really grow and hit the round, ground running as soon as the pandemic kind of settles down for them. Yeah, and what we'll do, we'll put a link to an interview that you and I did uh, last month with Hopper and yes. TripActions when they talked specifically about that kind of product time that they'd spent during totally. the last 18 months. So uh, we'll, like I said, we'll put a link out to that for people to watch okay, great. that particular interview. So. Um, Put you on the spot then what are some of the kind of hot sectors for investors and i know mm. it's a ridiculously broad and overused question but it's a good way to to start things because we might get a sense of what you're thinking about well honestly i think the hottest sector right now for investors is sustainability companies um you know and and and, and we talked about this in our in our conversation a month ago as well um sustainability only grew in importance through the pandemic and only grew in, you know, just focus during the pandemic. Part of it was because people had time to think about it and, you know, and that's good. I mean, part of it was you could see the actual direct impact of less travel, less car travel during that time. And so now, you know, okay, let's, let's, let's continue this momentum. So sustainability companies are really interesting for, especially for us right now, a lot of investors are focused on this. Um, you know, it's a problem we all have to solve. You know, uh, we have very, very aggressive net carbon zero goals, those types of things. Um, there's a lot of really interesting technology that could use um, some investment because, you know, a lot of these products are really far out and they need a lot of investment to kind of come to fruition and come to reality, but they're going to be great and they're going to solve these problems. They just need that investment now. And so we're really focused on, you know, making sure we're in there and, and helping these companies. Now, that's interesting. And you know, we're obviously thrilled that uh, JetBlue is interested in that. But do you sense sustainability led travel startups have got the attention of the wider investment community? Because, you know, it's perhaps doesn't give uh, an immediate ROI on that investment if you're a, you know, if you're a VC or something, because it's, yeah. as you say, some of this technology is very early stage. There's no mm -hmm. tangible result immediately and it's all for the greater good which sometimes um, uh, present company excluded some are, uh, are, are less interested in those things are they they're more yeah. interested in getting a return i would say under normal circumstances those that, that could all be true um what i would say is that the, the deals that we've been looking at have been very heavily um you know lots of heavy interest from vcs um and there's, you know, there's, there's some funds that are coming out that are just focused on sustainability. And, um, you know, so a lot of the deals that we've been in and a lot of deals we've been looking at have had a lot of VC interest. So I think that bodes well for the sector. And definitely, of course, the, to your point, um, this is a very travel specific um, or some of the companies we're looking at are obviously very travel specific, but there's some that are not travel specific. They're just kind of greater sustainability um, companies. And I think those have really gained a lot of traction. And also remember that it's not an aviation issue, it's an all travel. So it's logistics, it's all the cargo, it's car travel. So, so many um, big firms are really starting to look at how can they um, participate in these kind of longer term plays that are very much going to change sustainability in general. Yeah, interesting. So are there any sectors that you, or segments within you know, the travel, tourism, hospitality, aviation industry that you just types of business that you just wouldn't go near they're too they're too kind of lukewarm for you well i'd say this um 
there's a lot of travel specific startups that are struggling um, to fundraise and you know investors in general are a little lukewarm on travel startups um, it's tough especially if it's very specific to um, travel that is most depressed like you know think tours and activities think international travel um, you know some of those are really really are struggling and, and maybe not getting the um, the interest that they would otherwise get and should get because they're great companies but you know, it's a tough time for an investor to look at that and say, I want to invest in a travel specific startup that is really, really focused on travel. Um, I, I think that what is uh, definitely true, though, is is things like short term rentals and those types of travel companies are doing just fine. Um, those are the ones that are um, actually really, you know, it's smart that during the pandemic, that's the type of travel people wanted to do. They wanted to go someplace, they wanted to spend some time somewhere, but they don't want to be around other people. <laughs> so, you know, I want to rent a house with my family at the beach. <laughs> you know, those types of companies are going to be fine and are doing fine. Um, so, you know, we're interested in that sector as well. Um, but, you know, the companies within our portfolio that are struggling the most are very, very, very specific to travel, especially long distance travel. Right. OK. So we'll change tack if we can then, Amy, for a moment. I mean, okay. if, if I was um, if I was a startup founder with a great idea, what's a, what's a kind of a top tip or a recommendation you would give to me and my um, I would obviously have co-founders as well. What would be some of those tips that you would give to me to kind of catch your eye? You know, we're always looking for a couple different things. First of all, we want to see you be able to tell us exactly the problem you're trying to solve and how you're solving it. Um, you'd be surprised at how many startups just, you know, they need help with their pitch deck. They need help to be able to, to put together an actual story about what they're trying to do. And, and that does help, you know, we see a lot of startups that we're like, I, I still have spent an hour with you and I'm not 100% sure what you're trying to accomplish here. So that's tough. Um, but we want to see a good, so we want to see a good plan. We want to see a good pitch deck. We want to see like a, a coherent story. Um, we are always looking at the team. You know, we want to see a really good team. And then from a startup, I mean, I'm sorry, from an investment perspective, you know, one of the things that's really fo we focus on is, you know, we don't want any funny business in your deal and your setup. And, you know, you may be a small company, but you got to do things on the up and up. And, you know, if this is if there's weird transactions and weird relationships and things like that, that's going to be a turnoff. And we're also looking for reasonable deal terms. You know, I get it. You know, you may be struggling or you're really trying to fundraise, but if you don't give me a good deal, I'm just not going to do it. You know, so I mean, we passed on a deal. We passed on a deal we loved. We loved the tech. But the valuation was was just out of control and it was not warranted. And so, you know, we're just not going to do that deal. Do you think that there's um, uh, still a need for to that point that, you, you know, you're saying mm -hmm. people just don't know how to build a pitch deck together and they still haven't got some of the basics right? You know, the this kind of phase that we've been through for the last 15, 20 years in travel, where we've had so many startups and there are so many mm -hmm. accelerators and incubators and things, does it? Does it surprise you that there is still that lack of focus on getting a pitch deck right and making sure you behave like a grown up company rather than two people that have just come up with an idea in the yard and said, OK, let's give Amy Burr at JetBlue Technology Ventures a ring? You know, everybody has different talents and you we, we meet some just super smart, talented entrepreneurs who have a great idea. But you know what? That doesn't mean they're good at telling their story. Um, and that's really the problem is that this is a very specific, um, you know, skill set that a lot of people don't have. And so the, the other thing that they they don't do well, some, some, some startups don't do well, and they really need to solve this problem in order to get investors really excited is tell me why you're different than the other three companies I saw that are doing the same thing. What are you going to do that's different? And how are you going to defend your space? And how are you going to be the winner out of this space? Um, it's almost like it's so rare to find a really unique idea. You know, there's a lot, you know, there's, there's always somebody else who's doing what you're doing. Um, so tell me why I should pick you instead of the other, you know, or the other 10, you know? So that's, you know, it's just, it's a skill set that a lot of startups just don't have. And, and they would be best off 
spending a little bit of time and money on either a marketing person in-house or a firm to help them build that pitch deck. And one of the things that we try to do when helping our portfolio companies, especially as they're fundraising for like the next time, we go through their deck and we really, you know, we try to fine tune it. We keep it short, you know, no long wordy decks. Nobody wants to see these. They're not going to, it's not going to gain you an investment. <laughs> tell your story. <laughs> tell me why you're different. Tell me why I should invest in you. Um, so we do try to help quite a bit with that. <laughs> Would it be fair to say, Amy, that, you know, and I, I'm thinking about the point that you just said a moment ago, which is that, you know, there are very few new ideas now. And, you know, there will be people watching this who are frantically writing down a list of all the things that are brand new. But I wonder, is the, <laughs> excuse me, is the newness in technology or travel technology startups now around innovation in the technology itself rather than the services so you know we had we had airbnb that did its thing in short-term yeah. rentals and we had uber which did its thing and lots of others who also do their thing in ground transportation and stuff like that and maybe the Saunders of this world did more recently but i sense that the big ideas now in travel are going to be around the application of actual technology hardware mm -hmm. software and things like that is that accurate do you think yeah like the way i think about it is and I mean, you know, I, you're right. Everybody will be like, oh, there's new ideas. Okay, there are a lot of, of things to solve. The question, the, the new idea might be how you do it through a different technology, maybe a different, slightly different spin. But, you know, we've seen 8,800 startups over the last five years. Um, it's been a long time since somebody surprised me with an idea. You know, it's just, they just tend to be the same you know, same problems you're trying to solve, same opportunities. Those are great problems and great opportunities. So tell me why you are different and what you're doing to, to solve that differently. Um, and it may be using new tech. It may be, you know, it's an operational challenge for the aviation industry and you're tackling it with AI, but in this slightly different way, you know, it's just how are you doing it differently that will be successful, you know, and um, how, how, what is that going to look like, you know? So I do think, I, I, I do think there's, Rarely do we see something that's really super unique. It's more how people are tackling these things that are different. Yeah. And uh, before we get to the end here, Amy, I just, you know, I think it would be useful. I mean, where you work is a fairly unique place because it's aligned with a major carrier that everybody mm -hmm. knows. But I wonder if people know exactly what your, if I can say, little corner of, of everything kind of works. And what exactly do you do for startups? Yeah, so um, as you point out, we're a subsidiary of JetBlue Airways. Um, we do invest in and partner with early stage startups. Um, we do a couple of different things. We have a twofold mandate. We are very focused on innovation um, within JetBlue, within the industry, within partners, trying to figure out interesting ways to solve these problems, as, as, as we just talked about, and bringing that innovation into the organization. And then we're also focused on investing in great startups. Um, after we invest in great startups, we have an entire platform of portfolio support. Um, we are very, very focused on helping our companies grow and be successful. Um, we do things, everything from helping them with business development and financial assistance and helping them with their next, you know, next um, fundraise, comms and marketing, hiring, all of these things. If, if they need help or advice or information or, you know, another set of eyes on a on a pitch deck, all of those things. We do all of those things with our, our portfolio companies. And it's we formalized it actually in 2020. It was part of the things that we chose to do as we had extra time, as we put, put in place a much more formal platform structure. Um, so we spent a lot of time with our portfolio companies. We spent a lot of time with our partners within the travel industry, helping them think about how to use startups. That's kind of our mandate in life. And th those are the two different kind of aspects of what we do. Okay. And last of all, I promise last of all this time, I mean, I wonder sometimes whether the industry and also the press, so, you know, on, mm. on our side as well, is perhaps a little too gushing over the concept of startups and what startups bring. And there's not enough kind of reality thrown in. You know, we see mm. the failure rates in, in travel tourism and hospitality startups, you know, depending on which measurement you use, it can be anything between 65 and 85 percent of companies fail. And I wonder whether sometimes we as an industry and again us in the press should be a little bit more kind of you know what well, that's just a really rubbish idea before <laughs> do you know what I mean it's <laughs> does that make sense yeah. do you agree yeah I, I definitely hear what you're saying um and it's interesting we, we kind of try to walk this balance as well um 
I believe that having startups in this industry is really important because this industry is so old school and our technology is really old, old school and how we do our business, how we run our business hasn't changed a lot, you know, in a, in a lot of years. So the more we ingest, like, or more we kind of inject new ideas, new focus, new startups, new tech into the industry, I think the better off the industry will be. So I think it's a hugely important space. I think we, you know, we at JTV and I, and I hope my fellow investors out there, we try to be realistic with our startups and say like, okay, I just have a startup. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I, I was like, this is a, this is not a good idea. I'm sorry. You're not going to get any traction. I didn't say it quite that badly, (laughs) but I'm like, this is not an idea that's going to gain traction in the industry. It's just not. And so far they haven't gained any traction and we have to be more realistic with our startups. But what I try to do is, okay, this idea exactly isn't solving the problem you're trying to solve. Why don't you try this? You know, and that might be the way to go. And that's another thing we do with our portfolio companies is they come in, if they're kind of heading off on the wrong track of how to solve a problem, we try to redirect them a little bit and say, this is a real problem that's in the industry, but this is a better way to do it. So that's one of the pieces of advice that we really give. But, you know, sometimes we just have to tell a startup that comes to us, I'm sorry, that's just not going to gain any traction. Okay. Constructive criticism is always better than just slamming something isn't it? <laughs> yeah okay. i mean we, but you know sometimes you have to be a little bit more like okay really we're done <laughs> yeah okay brilliant uh, amy burr president of JetBlue tech ventures thanks so much for joining us on this episode of pulse really appreciate your Great. time amy. thank you absolutely thank you